Yesterday, I highlighted a new application for Android called WinLater. This is a Windows emulator that allows you to install PC programs and games on your smartphone or tablet. I have already shown you how to get this application up and running, so if you're not familiar with how that is done, be sure to check the video description below and I'll include a link to that previous video that I have done that shows you all of the steps involved. But I recently received a question asking how to install a program or game with the WinLater application. So today I'll be focusing on how I configure the app when installing a Windows game. Now for this to work, you will need to obtain the installation files for whatever program or game that you're wanting to install on Android. In today's example, I downloaded these files from my GOG account, but again, WinLater should work on Windows programs as well as games. So you can test this out with a video editor or an audio editor application if you want. WinLater should work with anything that is supported by Wine D 3D version 7.8. Wine D3D version 8.0, D8VK 1.0, DXVK 1.10.3, or DXVK 2.2, as long as your device supports an included graphics driver in WinLater. And this program could get updated multiple times in the future with support for different versions of Wine D3D or DXVK. Now, after your installation files have been downloaded, they will need to be stored in the downloads folder of your Android smartphone or tablet. I have created a subfolder within the downloads folder on this smartphone to keep the install files for the games that I have been testing out. However, they only need to be accessible from the downloads folder. So you can store them in that download folder itself, or you could put it in a directory within that download folder. Now with all of that done, we're finally going to open up the WinLater application, and then we're going to create our first container. Now a container is basically an emulated install of Windows on our Android device. So whenever we go to create a container, we have the ability to give it a specific name. We can choose the screen resolution. We can pick a specific graphics driver. Now, if you are using a Qualcomm Snapdragon device, you are likely going to have the best results on the Turnip Plus Zinc graphic driver. However, with all of the other options here, I recommend experimenting and trying out the other options if you end up having trouble with the default setup. We then need to select a specific DX wrapper for this container. And this is another thing that may need to be changed in order for whatever you're emulating to perform better. I'm going to keep this on Wine D3D version 8.0 for this demonstration. But again, you'll want to change this to the other options and run your game 
to see if the other wrappers produce a better performant game. If you want, you can enable the show FPS option so that you can get a frames per second counter in the corner. And then we have the option to pick which CPU cores can be used with the emulated Windows environment. It may seem like common sense to enable all of your CPU cores here, but you will likely only want to allow your performance cores to be used in the emulated environment. Or at the very least, you will want to leave at least one CPU core unchecked so that the Android services are able to continue working in the background while you play your game or run your Windows application. There are also some settings that you may want to configure down at the bottom as well. For example, you're going to want to make sure that the CSMT option is set to enable if you want the game or app to be run in multi-core mode. You may also want to change the video memory size option down here as well. Two gigabytes is going to be set as the default, but if, for example, your phone or tablet has eight gigabytes of RAM, then you likely want to change this to four gigabytes of video memory. Alternatively, if you have a low end device with a limited amount of RAM, then you may want to set this to one gigabyte or 512 megabytes. Another section that I wanted to point out here is the DX component tab. When testing out the game Baldur's Gate, I noticed that the audio was messed up and it echoed a little bit unless I changed the direct sound option from built-in to native. So you may want to experiment with this section of settings as well if you're having difficulty playing a game or getting a Windows program to run using WinLater on Android. So once you have your container set up, we're going to tap on the blue check mark down at the bottom right to save that container and let it be created. Once that has been created, we can run this container by tapping on the three dot menu right there and then selecting run. It will take a few seconds for the app to boot up our Windows environment and you will then be shown a desktop and a file explorer window when it is ready. So you're going to see three different drives here. With the C drive housing the emulated environment container that we just created. The D drive is actually the downloads folder and it's going to be where we have our game installation files. And lastly we have our Z drive that's actually the phone's root storage location. So as you can see we can use the touch screen to control the mouse. And the first thing we're going to need to do is install our program or game. So let's jump into the D drive. And if you remember, I told you I created a subfolder here that stores all of our installation files. And if you want, we can even change the view to either a list 
or small icons or larger icons, whatever is best for your use case. Once you find a setup.exe file for something that you want to install, we just need to double tap it in order to launch it. And you should see the setup wizard appear. Now I'll be using Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition here in today's demonstration, since I know that this game runs rather well. A game like this will take some time to install, so we just need to be patient, watch the progress meter to make sure that it doesn't get stuck along the way, and Baldur's Gate will be installed on our Android smartphone. With the installation complete, we can go ahead and exit this minimize our file explorer and you should find the newly created desktop shortcut for our game in the top right corner and now we just need to double tap on our icon to launch it just as you would on a windows pc now again if you notice any graphical or audio issues, then you're going to want to go back and edit the container that you had just created. Atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of You can see the game runs rather well. The audio plays well. And we are able to play the game exactly as you would expect. And again, we can edit this container by tapping on the three dot menu, selecting edit, and choosing our options from here. I would suggest changing things like the graphics driver, DX wrapper, wine registry keys, and the DX component options to see if you can find a combination that works well with your program or game. When later is rather early in its development process, so we should expect to see some bugs with certain programs and games. After tink tinkering with these settings, if you notice that something is still off, then I recommend creating a bug report that can be sent in to the developer. For example, I tested out Psychonauts, and even though I was tapping the enter button with the on-screen keyboard, the game did not register it to complete the name entry selection. So while I was able to watch through the intro of that game, I was unable to play any of it since I couldn't get the game to start. 
I have some log files that I plan on sending in to the developer in hopes that they will be able to figure out why it happened before uploading an update that fixes it. I hope this video has helped anyone who has wanted to know how to get started with the WinLater application for Android. This Windows emulator seems quite robust already, but hopefully it receives a lot of support from both the community as well as its developers. As someone who prefers to emulate games on Android, rather than play a microtransaction fueled mobile game, I certainly appreciate the work that has been put into this project already and can see myself playing some classic Windows games with it.